Hey, welcome to day five of our Read Through the Bible in a Year plan. Today, we are continuing in Job. We're looking at Job's reply to Eliphaz, starting in Job 6, and we're reading through chapter 9. This chapter starts off with Job's reply to his friend, which is where we left off yesterday. Job's reply to Eliphaz, and he kind of refutes what the guy's saying. He's like, what, what can I do if God is against me? If God is punishing me, then I'm stuck with it because there's nothing I can say against God. In chapter seven, he kind of speaks out in his grief. In chapter eight, then his friend Bildad speaks up and he's like, essentially, look, man, if you repent, God is going to restore you. There's no way that that won't happen. And Job replies, yeah, I get that. But how am I supposed to go and take God to court? How can I go and prove my case? Who am I to stand up to God? There are a couple of pieces here that really stand out to me, especially at the end. But I want to I want to highlight a couple of the things. One, at the end of all of this, we know that Job has not sinned. In his frustration and pain and grief, Job is crying out and he says some pretty intense things, but he's never questioning who God is. He's questioning whether or not he has done something to deserve where he's at. And he's questioning, like, how do I have recourse against this? But Job Job does lament his situation. In chapter 7, verse 11, he says, Therefore, I will not restrain my mouth. I will speak in the anguish of my spirit. I will complain in the bitterness of my soul. Skip down a few verses to verse 17. He says, What is a mere human that you think so highly of him and you pay so much attention to him? You inspect him every morning and put him to the test every moment. Will you ever look away from me or leave me alone long enough to swallow? If I have sinned, what have I done to you, watcher of humanity? Why have you made me your target so that I have become a burden to you? Why not forgive my sin and pardon my iniquity? For soon I will lie down in the grave. You will eagerly seek me, but I will be gone. And that's what his friend Bildad responds to is that kind of statement of like, if you repent, he will. If you confess your sin, he will forgive you and he will restore you. And Job says, yeah, I know that's true, but how can I be justified before God? If one wanted to take him to court, he could not answer God once in a thousand times. And he's like, this can't be just because I have sinned, because I don't know what the sin is and I'm trying to confess and nothing's coming of it. Who do I go to if God will not respond and hear me? And he finishes it like this. Chapter nine, verse 32. For he is not a man like me, that I can answer him, that we can take each other to court. There is no mediator between us to lay his hand on both of us. Let him take his rod away from me so that his terror will no longer frighten me. Then I would speak and not fear him. But that is not the case. I am on my own. Questioning why God is silent in his time of pain and grief and suffering and why he has done nothing wrong and yet this calamity befalls him. But in all of this, Job does not sin. So there's a couple of amazing moments of encouragement for us here. One, we can speak in our grief and express our pain and express our anguish and express our frustration. But we can express our grief and question, God, why aren't you showing up right now? And we are not sinning in doing that when we are looking for God and not finding relief in the moment that we are seeking it. But it's okay to express that. It's okay to express that doubt, that fear, that anguish. It's good to do that. Also, what Job doesn't yet know and what in the Old Testament they don't yet know is that there is a mediator between God and man, and that's Jesus, and that's to come later. But take that encouragement as well, that there is one who stands before God advocating on our behalf, and that is Christ. Job is a pretty painful story to read back and forth, um, this dialogue between him and his friends as he's suffering with, seemingly without cause. And yet, in all of his response, where his friends assign a direct, if you do right, Good things will happen if you do wrong. Bad things will happen. Bad things happened. You must have done wrong. Fix it. It's more complicated than that. It always has been. It always will be. When we are suffering, it's not a direct reflection on whether or not you have extra sinned against God. You can express that pain and frustration to him. He can take it. He can receive it. And in the midst of all of it, don't forget that he is still good and he has not overlooked what you are going through like job acknowledges who is man that you are mindful of me that you pay attention to everything i do he sees you he pays attention to you as well even in your suffering and pain even when it seems like he's not there he has not abandoned you i hope this uh, reading is blessing you we'll catch you on the next one be rad for jesus